We're going to do a magnetism problem. We have a rotating conducting sphere. So this is a sphere that has charge on it and it is a conducting sphere. So from that we know that the, all of the charge will go towards the outside. So none of it will occupy the interior of the sphere. And the sphere is rotating like this with a frequency of F. And uh, the charge is Q and the frequency F. We want to calculate the magnetic field anywhere along the axis here, and then we'll do this with some numbers too, see what we're getting. The result that we're gonna use uh, for this is that we calculated that the wire like this carrying current I will create a B field at any point, and the equation that we got was mu zero I over two R squared over X squared plus R squared to the three halves. <clears throat> so that gives you the magnetic field anywhere for a current carrying wire. Now, if instead of a wire, it is a charge Q rotating with a frequency F, what's the relationship? We can say current is equal to charge divided by the period, how much charge is flowing, divided by how many seconds it's, it takes for one cycle, right? One over the period is the frequency, F and Q. So I can be always replaced by FQ, right? in these kinds of equations. So we just have mu zero over two, okay? And then we have F Q R squared over X squared plus R squared to the three halves. So what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna put the X, Y axis here at the center. And then the equation for the sphere is X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared is equal to R squared. Then we're going to take a slice of the sphere, like this, okay? And we're going to say that slice creates a B field there, and the equation is dB is equal to mu zero FQ over 2. So instead of Q, we're going to have dQ, which is the charge enclosed in that the ring of charge. So we're going to replace this by dq. And then r squared becomes the radius of that. So it's just radius of that because if you take different slices, the radii changes, right? You have here uh, big r squared changes to little r squared. And then here, x squared plus r squared. Big r squared also changes to little r squared. What does x squared become? Well, x squared, what did that mean? It was the distance between the ring and the point. So if I want to change it, in this equation, the way that I have it set up, x represents the distance from the center of my sphere to a particular ring in that sphere, right? But this x represents the distance between the ring and the point. So this x represents this distance, right? How could I write that? If the distance between the center and that point is D, right? So I want to find the magnetic field at any distance D away from the center, right? Here or here or here. This X represents the distance between that ring and that point, so it's going to be D minus X d minus x. i do r squared plus, and then that gets replaced by d minus x quantity squared, and then to the power 3 halves, right? Now we're going to set this up, coming down, because the sphere is not like a cylinder. So the, the top is slightly coming down, like that, and then this is the center of the sphere. So we can start out by saying dq is equal to sigma dA, right? See, sigma is the surface charge density of the sphere. And then we have here q is equal to sigma, and then dA is equal to what? Uh, we can visualize this is r, right? The radius of that particular ring. So it'll just be 2 pi r, 2 pi r, the circumference of that ring, times this length here. We can call that it's not really dx. dx would be, if this one was flat, then we would be doing dx, but it's actually coming down. So we can call this 
2 pi r is the times dx prime. We can call this dx prime. Uh, let's find the relationship between dx prime and dx for the sphere. Okay, how can we do that? We have here a triangle. Then we can say this is the angle phi to any point on the sphere, right? This is the radius of the sphere from here to here, the radius of the sphere. So we're going to say cosine of phi is equal to what? This is the distance x, x over r. So the derivative of that will be negative sine phi d phi 1 over r dx. Now what does d phi mean? Well, what we do is we take this right here. Think of, uh, think of this one here. As we're going along the sphere, right? The sphere is like this. So what this means is that if a certain change in the angle phi, and then this one will represents d phi, right? A certain change in angle y, how much change will it create in the dx, in this thickness here. So it represents a relationship between this uh, subtended angle d phi and the dx, which is this length, right? But now I want to know how is this related? Well, I can use the simple geometry. I can say dx prime is equal to r d phi, r d phi, right? So since I have a relationship between d phi and dx, and I have a relationship between dx prime and d phi, what could I do? I could say d phi is equal to negative 1 over, and then put the dx here, then the sine of uh, phi goes down there, r sine of phi. I take that, substitute it into there. dx prime is equal to r times what? d phi, and then that's going to be negative dx over r sine of phi. Okay? So what happens? Well, r is going to cancel. r is going to cancel. So eventually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in here, but I actually don't want an angle phi in my integral because that introduces a new variable. Well, I, what I can say is sine of phi is equal to what? Sine of phi is equal to r over r. r over r. That one is okay. I can substitute that. So I can say dx prime is equal to negative dx over sine of phi, which is r over r, r over r, and then I finally found the relationship between dx prime and dx. So negative r dx over r. Okay? How can I use that? I can put that into here. dq is equal to sigma 2 pi r dx prime. Dx prime is equal to negative r dx over r. Okay? Okay, that's good because this r cancels this r. So dq is equal to negative 2 pi sigma r dx. So from now on, anytime I'm doing a sphere problem, I can take rings and then I can take dq and then I can use this result. I don't have to rederive this result every time. 2 pi sigma r dx. Now I'm going to put that into there. Okay? also need to remember the r squared up here. And now I can use this, r squared. What is the meaning of r squared? Well, r squared is the radius of that particular ring, right? We have like this. This is r. You see, x is this axis, y is this axis going up, and then z is the axis coming toward you, right? So y squared plus z squared is the one that basically measures this way, right? We're calling r the radius of each particular ring. r squared is just simply equal to y squared plus z squared, right? We can replace this with this and they're interchangeable. Therefore, we know r squared is equal to r squared minus x squared, right? Then we can substitute that there, we can substitute that there. Let's see what we get. Basically, the integral is in terms of the slices of the x's, right? Each slice is a, a, a unit x away from the uh, origin, right? So we could kind of simplify this maybe a little bit. We have r squared minus x squared plus d squared minus 2dx plus x squared, right? 
to the power of 3 halves. Now we can substitute sigma is equal to Q over 4 pi R squared, right? The charge of the sphere over the surface area of the sphere. So we could do Q here over 4 R. Then we got that integral, 3 halves. Now I can apply this to any point along the axis of the rotation of the sphere and find the magnetic field. This negative sign I don't really need because it came from here, negative R dx. The, the negative here is mainly a directional thing. So from here, if you look at the ring, right? Basically, if the angle phi, this is phi, and then this value is x. What that means is if the angle phi is decreasing, the x value is increasing. A unit change in one is an opposite unit change of the other. So in terms of the negative, it really is not needed here. We just need the absolute value of this. So basically, take the positive, take the positive, take the positive, and then that will be your general equation. Let's see what the equation gives us for the center of the sphere. Center of the sphere, D is equal to zero. F Q over 4 R to the fourth then you have integral negative R to R R squared DX minus negative R to R X squared DX okay well this one you can we can just integrate 0 to R and double it and this one we could also integrate 0 to R and double it so let's see what we get B at the center is equal to uh, the two cancels with the four, so mu zero f q over two r to the fourth. This is gonna be r squared. So what can we see from that? Well, remember f q is the same thing as saying i. So it's kind of like saying mu zero i over three r. Okay, what was the magnetic field created at the center of a coil? B coil was equal to mu zero i over two r, right? So if you have a, a coil like this complete turn, right at the center is two r. But now you basically have a bunch of coils, but the, the coils are reducing in size, right? So the magnetic field created inside is gonna be a little bit weaker. So instead of two, it's gonna be three. So it actually makes sense because the coils are getting smaller and smaller. I would say mu zero, so that's four pi times 10 to the minus seven. The frequency would be 60. Q would be five over three times the radius would be two, All right? So let's see what we get, All right? Now, what is the magnetic field gonna be three meters away outside? So then we have to put all of this, right? B 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7, we're going to put 60, Q is equal to 5, 4, 2, negative 2 to 2 squared is 4 minus x squared, then you're going to have 2 squared plus 3 squared, right? The distance is 3, so 2 squared plus 3 squared, what is that? 4 plus 9, 13 minus 2 times the distance d, 2 times d, and then d is 3, right? So that's 6. And then x is just x. 3, 9, 5. Then you multiply it by the negative 5 teslas. Right? Does that make sense? Yes, of course that makes sense. The magnetic field at the center should be the strongest, right? And then after that, it should be getting weaker. So. If it's rotating like this, the magnetic field should look something like this, right? Spinning like that. Like that, right? So the center is the strongest, and then after that it gets weaker. So this illustrates a good example of taking slices of the sphere and integrating along the sphere, and then using some relationships between the, the, the length along the, the ring and then relating that to the thickness dx and then setting up your integral, then you can get the magnetic field anywhere, okay? Thank you very much.